The study of engineering mathematics begins with understanding change through differential and integral calculus. Everything starts with limits. A limit is the value that a function approaches as the input approaches some value. Mathematically, we write this as. This concept is fundamental because it lets us define derivatives and integrals rigorously. Once we understand limits, we get derivatives. A derivative is the limit of the difference quotient as h approaches zero. Big brains call this instantaneous rate of change. But for square brains like me, it's just the slope of the tangent line at any point on a curve. The derivative gives us critical information about function behavior, where functions are increasing or decreasing, where they have maximum and minimum values, and how they're changing at any specific point. But derivatives only give us rates of change. To find accumulated quantities, we need integrals. An integral is essentially the reverse of a derivative. It's the antiderivative. The fundamental theorem of calculus connects these two operations and tells us that integration and differentiation are inverse processes. Here's where single variable calculus extends into the multivariable world. Instead of functions of just x, we deal with functions of multiple variables like f of x, y, and z. This requires partial derivatives, multiple integrals, and entirely new mathematical techniques. And when we can't find exact solutions, we use sequences and infinite series. A sequence is just an ordered list of numbers, like 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, and so on. An infinite series is what happens when you add up all the terms of a sequence, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. The big question is, does this infinite sum actually equal a finite number? That's called convergence. For example, the geometric series, Taylor series, let us represent any smooth function as an infinite polynomial, and Maclaurin series are the foundation for how computers actually calculate transcendental functions. Multivariable calculus is the same thing as single variable calculus, but instead of simple xy graphs, we're dealing with xyz space and functions of multiple variables simultaneously. When you have a function like this, you can't just take a regular derivative anymore. Instead, you take partial derivatives, treating one variable as constant while differentiating with respect to the other. So, the partial derivative with respect to x gives you 2x, and the partial derivative with respect to y gives you 2y. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of just finding slopes, we get something called the gradient. The gradient is a vector made up of all the partial derivatives. Express this in what the nerds call del notation, that upside down triangle symbol. Then there's curl, which is the cross product of nabla with a vector field, and it measures the rotation of a vector field at each point. The curl operation involves taking partial derivatives and arranging them in a specific cross product pattern. Finally, there's divergence, which is the dot product of nabla with a vector field. Divergence measures how much a vector field is spreading out or converging at each point by summing up specific partial derivatives. These three operations, gradient, curl, and divergence, form the foundation of vector calculus that engineering students must master to understand field theory and multivariable optimization problems. Differential equations are mathematical rules that involve functions and their derivatives. You give them relationships between rates of change, and they give you the actual functions that satisfy those relationships. There are two main types, ordinary differential equations, or ODEs, which involve functions of a single variable, and partial differential equations, or PDEs, which involve functions of multiple variables and their partial derivatives. Notice that differential equations are the same as the calculus we just learned, but instead of finding derivatives of known functions, we're finding unknown functions when we know something about their derivatives. A simple first order ODE looks like this. To solve it, we need to find the function y of x that satisfies this relationship. Methods include separation of variables, integrating factors, and substitution techniques. Second order ODEs such as are more complex. These show up constantly in mathematical modeling. The solution involves finding the complementary solution to the homogeneous equation, plus a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. For PDEs, you're dealing with functions of multiple variables. A classic example is the heat equation, where this is the Laplacian operator, the sum of all second partial derivatives. Solving PDEs often requires techniques like separation of variables, Fourier analysis, or numerical methods. The mathematical theory behind differential equations includes existence and uniqueness theorems, which tell us when solutions exist and whether they're unique. This theoretical foundation is crucial for understanding when mathematical models are well-posed. Things aren't always smooth differential equations, though. 
Sometimes we need the discrete world of analytic geometry and linear algebra. Analytic geometry deals with coordinate systems and geometric shapes expressed algebraically. The Cartesian plane uses ordered pairs to represent points, and we can describe geometric objects using equations. Lines become y equals mx plus b, and those conic sections make their comeback. Circles as, ellipses as, parabolas as, and hyperbolas as. But here's where it gets really interesting. Vectors are basically cooler versions of regular numbers since they have both magnitude and direction. A vector in three-dimensional space is written as or using unit vector notation. Vector operations follow specific mathematical rules. Vector addition is component-wise. The dot product gives us a scalar. The cross product gives us another vector perpendicular to both original vectors. Then we get into linear algebra, the study of vector spaces and linear transformations. Matrices are rectangular arrays of numbers that represent linear transformations. An M by N matrix has M rows and N columns, and matrix multiplication follows the rule. Vectors, matrices, and linear transformations are collectively called linear algebra because operations preserve the properties of linearity, specifically additivity and scalar multiplication. This mathematical structure extends beyond just arrays of numbers to include function spaces, where functions themselves can be treated as vectors in infinite dimensional spaces. In general, there's a couple massive theorems that tie all of vector calculus together and show us when exact solutions don't exist. The divergence theorem, also called Gauss's theorem, states that the triple integral of divergence over a volume equals the surface integral of the vector field over the boundary. Mathematically, it is written as, where n hat is the outward unit normal. Stokes theorem connects line integrals around a closed curve to surface integrals of the curl. The formula is, this theorem is the multivariable generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Recognizing these fundamental relationships helps mathematicians understand the deep connections between different types of integrals and provides powerful computational shortcuts for complex problems. But here's the reality. Most equations in engineering mathematics can't be solved analytically. That's where numerical methods come in. These are mathematical algorithms that approximate solutions using iterative calculations. Newton's method finds roots of equations using the iterative formula. It converges quadratically when it works, but can fail if the derivative is zero or if you start too far from the root. For differential equations, Euler's method approximates solutions using this formula, where h is the step size. It's simple, but has only first-order accuracy. runge kuda methods achieve higher accuracy by evaluating the derivative at multiple intermediate points. The fourth-order runge kuda method is the gold standard, providing fourth-order accuracy while remaining computationally manageable. Probability theory starts with sample spaces, the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. Events are subsets of the sample space, and we assign probabilities using axioms. Probabilities are non-negative, the total probability is one, and probabilities of disjoint events add up. For continuous random variables, we use probability density functions, written as f of x, where the probability of an interval is the integral, the most important distribution is the normal distribution, with density function written as. Statistics involves parameter estimation and hypothesis testing. The central limit theorem tells us that sample means approach normal distributions regardless of the population distribution, which is fundamental for understanding data analysis and validation methods. Now for the physics integration, complex numbers become essential for describing oscillatory phenomena. A complex number z equals a plus b. I has real part a and imaginary part b, where i squared equals negative 1. In exponential form, the formula is connecting complex analysis to trigonometry. Maxwell's equations describe electromagnetic fields using vector calculus. The four equations are Gauss's law, no magnetic monopoles, Faraday's law, and Ampere-Maxwell law. For mechanical systems, we get second-order differential equations like this for mass spring damper systems. Fluid mechanics involves the Navier-Stokes equations, which are partial differential equations describing fluid flow using velocity fields v of x, y, z, and t. So we have our probability theory, our statistical methods, and our physical equations. After that, it's as simple as solving coupled nonlinear partial differential equations in multiple dimensions with stochastic boundary condition. If you've been following along, you should be able to set up the mathematical framework for modeling a vibrating bridge in crosswinds while accounting for measurement uncertainty and electromagnetic interference, all using the same mathematical tools we just covered.
Anyway, subscribe or your next integral will converge to negative infinity.